First part of our page says to place a check mark by the correctly written sentences. So let's go ahead and do that. Number one, you may go sledding or you may build a snowman. Who can tell me should sentence number one get a check mark or should sentence number one not get a check mark? Christopher? Sentence number one, you say not. That is correct. Sentence number one should not get a check mark. It should have a comma after the word sledding, but it doesn't because they don't have a comma after the word sledding. Not correct. Sentence number two, we made snow angels and our cousins made a snow fort. Who can tell me for sentence number two? Should it get a check mark? Or should it not get a check mark? Is it correct or not? Bella? Sentence number two should get a check mark. It is correct, so put a check mark on it. Sentence number three, we can play outside if we dress warmly. We can play outside if we dress warmly. Should sentence three get a check mark or no check mark? <clears throat> What do you think, Bailey? What would you say? Check mark or no check mark? Okay. <clears throat> so this one, Bailey, the it's it's a it's a little thing, but why do you say no? What do you think is wrong with it? It's okay. Well, right here, they don't actually have two complete sentences. It's not, all of them are not going to be compound sentences. Like in this case, there's not two complete sentences. You're right about that. But if there were two complete sentences, then yes, you would need the comma, you need a conjunction. In this case, it's not two complete sentences because they're saying we can play outside, which is one complete sentence. But this part is not a sentence on its own. It's just letting you know when are you going to be able to play outside? So they're telling you that only if you dress warmly are you going to be able to play outside, so it's actually okay the way that it is. What about sentence four? The ground is all white and fluffy because it snowed. Should sentence four get a check mark? Is it a correctly written sentence? Or is there a problem with it? Shirin, what do you think? I think you should get a check mark. So you say that it's a correctly written sentence, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So just like sentence two, just like sentence three, sentence four is a correctly written sentence. So it does get a check mark. They do have a conjunction here between white and fluffy, but it's just because they're using two different adjectives to describe the ground, but not because they're trying to combine two complete sentences. Yeah. 
Okay, before we start this one, let me grab a circle. Fine. Ready. Okay. So we have circle the prefix, underline the root word, write the meaning of it. our prefix is sub and our root word is marine. And who can tell me what does submarine mean? Or what do you think it means? Violet? Okay, submarine, it can be a noun, but it doesn't have to be. The reason why they call those things submarine is because of what it is. Uh, it's just like you said, submarines can go underwater. Now, you can describe something as submarine so long as it's under the water, like in the ocean. But that's usually the one that people... Um, think of is yeah the the boat. So you're right. It means underwater. So sub means under. Marine is talking about the water. So we can put under water. Let me grab another. Circle, grab another line. Okay. But it is a good thing you thought about that noun, Violet, that thing, because it's a really good example of what the marine means. Okay, the next one is illiterate, and I'm going to shrink my circle a little bit. So, ill, I L. is my prefix and literate is the root word illiterate ill is a prefix that means not so who can tell me what do you think illiterate means who's ever heard that word before illiterate Has anyone ever heard someone use that or, or seen it maybe like in a book or a movie or a TV show or anything like that? It's kind of a tougher word, but the definition of illiterate or what it means is because it uses that prefix ill, not it's when you're not able to read or you're not able to write. So when they say that, it's not... Illiterate is like, um, like if you don't know how to read, you don't know how to write. So kind of like um, really young kids before they're, you know, even in, in um, kindergarten or, or pre-K or things like that. Because in kindergarten and pre-K, that's usually when we're learning how to read, how to write. So usually kids that are, are younger, they haven't uh, gone to school yet or mom, and, mom or dad hasn't, um, hasn't taught them to, to read things or to write things, that would be illiterate. But can not read or write. Let me grab another circle. The next one is immodest. So this one again, I'm going to shrink my circle just a bit. The prefix is im, I am. My root word is 
modest. Raise your hand if you've ever heard that word before, immodest. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever heard the word modest before. Okay. So, immodest, the prefix im means not. Modest, uh, I guess you can kind of think of it like... Like the opposite of someone um, bragging a lot. So when someone uh, kind of talks about like how good they are and how great they are and how awesome they are and that's that's what they want to talk about all the time, all the time. That is like the opposite of being modest. So like people that like um, that like to brag. That's. That's like the opposite of modest. So modest would be like, um, let's say, well, like um, Kylie earlier showed us um, the thing that she had made, and if she had showed us and we went, "Wow, Kylie, that's 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 really cool," she said, "You know, thank you. It, you know, it took a long time and things like that." But if we said, "Wow, Kylie, that's really cool," and she went, "Yeah, I know." I'm like the best person to make these things. Like they're really easy for me. They're really hard for everyone else, but but I, I do them perfectly. So that would be like immodest. So instead of, um, it's not really being polite, but instead of like, you know, someone giving you a compliment and you're, you're like Kylie did, she said, thank you. And, you know, she talked about it. Immodest would be like someone who kind of says, oh, yeah, it's easy for me. It's super easy. I'm like the best at it, though. Like no one else makes them as good as I do. Just because, you know, no one else is good, as good as I am. Uh, they just they can't. I'm just better than everyone else. That's like immodest. Not. Modest. Sometimes people can can say things like that, and it just depends. Not everyone's like that. Some people are, some people aren't. And it doesn't mean, it's not necessarily the same thing as, let's say, um, you know, people who might be in sports or on sports teams. If, um, I'll, I'll give you a really good example. Um, Raise your hand if you um if you or mom or dad likes to watch um like the NFL games, like the professional football games on TV. Okay. So, a lot of times after the football games, they'll have like interviews with the players and the coaches and they'll ask them, you know, how do you think the game went? Uh why do you guys why do you think that you guys uh, won or why do you think you guys lost, depending on what happened in the game, things like that. And usually you can tell which players are immodest and which ones aren't. So, for instance, um, I know that there are sometimes, especially when the when the when their team loses, you can really see who is um, who's modest and who isn't. So when they ask them afterwards, sometimes, you know, when they lose, the the players might say something like, well, you know what, the other team, um, they they played better than we did. You know, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, we need to practice more. We need to uh, talk about it like together with everybody so that we don't make the same mistakes next week. And they'll they'll talk about it. And even when they're losing, even when they don't do well, they don't you know, blame anybody else. They don't say, well, you know, I played perfectly. It was my team. It was so-and-so that they were playing bad and they were always dropping the ball or, or they were always getting tackled or things like that. And there are some players that'll do it, even, you know, in, in professional players. There'll be professional players who will say, oh, well, you know, I did pretty good, but, but you know, so-and-so was, was just not doing very good at all. Like they weren't catching the ball at all. Or they kept, um, you know, getting tackled or they, they, you know, they were tripping all the time or 
whatever. So to be modest is like those players that even when they don't do very well, they won't um they won't try to make it seem like it's someone else's fault. They still talk about it like a team. And when they win, they do the same thing. When they talk about them, hey, how do you guys think, you know, how do you um how do you think the game went? Why do you think you guys won? Someone who's modest won't go, well, you know, obviously we won because of me. Um, you know, I was just throwing really good passes and, you know, no one could tackle me. And that's why we won. It's just because of me. That's not someone who's modest. Someone who's modest when they win would say, you know, well, you know, we played together really well as a team. We did really good. We worked together really well. That's how we won. Not, you know, one person doing everything. Grab another circle line. And this one, our prefix is dis. Our root word is a free. Jaylene, what do you think this one means? Disagree. Not agreeing. What does it mean to agree, Jaylene? Okay. It's it's like you saying yes. So if um if your mom went to you, Jaylene, and said, Jaylene, do you think we should have ice cream for dinner? And you went, yeah. That would be you agreeing. But if you said, no, mom, I don't think we should have ice cream for dinner. It's too cold. My, my teeth would be frozen. Then you're disagreeing. So disagree. The prefix dis means not, so not agree. No, not your opinion. It's just whatever um, whatever idea, because it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, do you think this is uh, good or not? You just think something else. It's not the same thing as saying it's your opinion, because sometimes your opinions match up. If someone said... Um, Vanilla ice cream isn't as good as chocolate. You could agree and you could say, yeah, you're right. Or you could disagree and say, no, that's I don't I don't think that's right. Um, with disagreeing, it doesn't have to be something that is. Like you're fighting or an argument. It could be very simple. Just no, I don't think. I don't think that's uh I don't think that's right or um you know I think something different. It doesn't have to be you know with people uh shouting or being being upset at each other. It just depends on how you disagree. Some people disagree and they they get very upset. And some people can disagree and they they're fine. They're calm about it. They don't um shout or yell or or anything like that okay let's look at our sentence let's see if we can find our mistakes janice read the snowy yeah janice read the snowy day to her little brother what is a mistake that we can find in our sentence Alexa, what's one mistake you can find? Very good. Little is not spelled correctly. They missed that second T. So I need to spell little correctly. Definitely a mistake I need to fix. Noah, on another one? Okay, capitalize Janice. It's it's someone's name. Always, always, always should be capitalized if it is somebody's. Jadine. 
Okay, you capitalize snowy and day because it's the name of a book. Absolutely. Bella? Okay, we need to put a period at the end of the sentence. She's no one's asking us anything. Uh, no one's shouting anything, but we don't need a question mark. We don't need an exclamation mark. We just need period. Christopher. No, Alexa, come see you. We said capitalize Janice. We said capitalize Snowy and Day. We said we need to fix the spelling of little. We need to put a period at the end. Yeah, we, we said that one already, Christopher. Capitalize the J and Janice. There is one more mistake. Janice read the snowy day to her little brother. It's actually a mistake that we've we've talked about before in class. It is kind of a tricky one. It's a little bit. Um, it might be a little bit difficult. But Alexa, you think you found it? No, that that red is okay. Red is a homophone, so there are. Uh, different ways you could spell it, but the way that they're using it here, it needs to be spelled that way. Because if you spell it R-E-D, you're talking about the color. Bella. Let's speak a little bit louder, Bella. We don't need a comma, no. The last mistake that's there is a capitalization mistake. One more word that we need to capitalize. Haley? No, Kaylee. Haley with the K. Capitalize the T in the. Remember with. It's okay. Remember in things like um, like book titles or movie titles or song titles, anything like that. Normally, words like the or of are lowercase. The only time that they do get capitalized is when they are at the beginning of the title, and since the title is the snowy day the needs to be capitalized so if we write it correctly we should have capital janice red capital the capital snowy capital day to her oh sorry no no capital that time little this time with two t's Brother, period. Okay. We're talking about comparative and superlatives again. Remember, comparative is when you're talking about two things and only two things. Superlative is when you're talking about more than two things. Yesterday we saw that Again, normally when you have comparative and superlatives, you would just add an ER or EST. ER for comparative, EST for superlative. Like old, 
older and oldest. Here, you wouldn't just add er or est. So it's not beautiful, beautifuler, or beautifulest. What would I use if I want to be comparative? Christopher? More beautiful. And Christopher, if I would use more beautiful for comparative, what do you think I should use for superlative? Most beautiful. Very good. So we have beautiful more beautiful, and most beautiful. Wonderful follows a very similar pattern. When you are making wonderful, comparative, or superlative, again, you wouldn't just put ER or EST. It's not wonderful, wonderfuler, or wonderfulest. What would it be? Who can tell me if I was going to be comparative? We have wonderful and then what? Jadine? More wonderful. And Jadine, if it's wonderful, more wonderful, what should the last one be? Most. Wonderful. There's even a Christmas song with that. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The wonderful, beautiful, they are also some of those words that don't get the ER or the EST ending when they become comparative or relative. Okay, we need to combine these sentences. So let's take a look at them. Leo likes to play outside in the winter. He keeps his gloves by the door. Leo likes to play outside in the winter. He keeps his gloves by the door. They only give us two answer choices to choose from. Leo likes to play outside in the winter, but he keeps his gloves by the door. Or Leo likes to play outside in the winter, so he keeps his gloves by the door. Who can tell me which answer choice seems like the better answer choice? Choose. Which one is the better way to combine these sentences? Kylie? Answer choice B. Answer choice B is better than answer choice A. They both had a comma. They both had a conjunction. The big difference here was what conjunction did they use? Answer choice A uses a conjunction, but we use that when we're trying to talk about opposites. Like uh, if you said, my dad is really tall, but I am really short. You're showing opposites. One is tall, one is short. If he's gonna play outside in the winter, having gloves would be a really good idea, especially if he lives in a place with lots of snow. If any of us have ever gone outside when it's snowing and made like snowballs or made snowmen, you know that if you're, if you're playing with the snow for more than just a, a very little bit of time, it can start to kind of hurt your hands. It feels uh, not, not so great after a little bit. When they use the conjunction so, they're telling us a reason. What is the reason? He likes to play outside in the winter. But what does he do? He keeps his gloves by the door. That way he doesn't have to go all around his house looking for his gloves when he wants to go play. Okay, so there is our page with all of our answers. Go ahead, I'll give you some time now to Make sure that you have all of your answers correct. 